Hey guys, just sitting out here on the back porch because um, I forgot on Monday nights I have to make my videos real early, but like right after the Kingdom Hall meeting because um, my sister goes to bed at 9 o'clock and that's quiet time, 10 at the top, so, and that's every day and I respect that. She works hard and she gets up very early in the morning, so... Um, she's a bus driver. Toot, toot. <laughs> Last week, she had bus driver appreciation week, so her boss got her some tulips, so I thought that was real nice. Um, she came home complaining one day, and I said, well, Mar, you know, you know what the problem is. The problem is you're expecting something. When you don't expect anything, you won't be disappointed. That's the lesson I learned, so... More power to her if she can learn it too. Don't expect nothing because, you know, no, nothing. If you, if you don't like being disappointed, then don't expect nothing. That's, that's my theory on it. I cannot wait till I get a thousand subscribers and one thousand likes to go live on YouTube. I'm really excited. I I'm I think I'm at twenty. <laughs> mm. Oh boy. Nine hundred and eighty more to go. We'll get there slowly but surely, but we will get there. If it takes me to my dying breath, I'll get there. I was just talking to my sister about, you know, what it, when, when I die, I hope somebody in my family continues my legacy, you know, of, you know, I hope one day that my children um, don't have to work. Unless they want to work. I have dreams. I asked Anna the other day on her birthday. I said, Anne, what's your dream? You know, because she knows my dreams. And she said, Mom, I would love to be an RN. And I'll tell you what, she would be a terrific RN. She has great compassion for elderly people. She just loves them, just like her mama. Uh -huh. But at one time, she did tell me, Mom, you know... A lot of people die in my line of work, and it's sad. Sometimes they're, they have no family. And I said, oh, Ann, that's really sad. You know, she said, the you know, some of the kids, they just drop them off and leave them there and pray for the best. But, uh, my God, I have a dream of, you know, her being a nurse, and when I retire, if I ever retire... Me working in her office as the receptionist, you know. And I, I've i dreamt that of Zoe becoming a doctor. Um, Anna always wanted to be an um, OBGYN doctor. And her goofy father used to say, Yeah, and can you take your daughter, take your dad to work one day? You know, being silly. But, you know, you think about it. She brings children into the world. It's it's just as, it's an awesome feeling. One of my good friends, um, Denise, she worked for John Hopkins over 25 years, and that's Kenny's sister. So um, I have to stop saying so, um. I need to find another word, Teresa Lynn. But uh, February 23rd, I, it's a great day of reflection for me. I'm sitting here writing in my journal, um, you know, trying to get all my thoughts together. I made a lot of videos today. Um, I hope you watch them, you know. But... I'm just sitting here writing in my journal. 
This I'm going over what I was writing from yesterday. I don't know if you can read it. Dear Jehovah, I come to you in prayer through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, my Savior. I ask that you hear my prayers. Only you, Jehovah, knows the pain that I carry around in my heart. I ask that you continue to bless me with eyesight, working hands, and a keen mind. <laughs> That's as far as I got. It's pretty sad. But I, you know, I pray all day long. I'm a prayer person, you know. I pray before my meals. I'm definitely thankful for the food I eat. You know, I pray when I wake up. The soon, the minute I wake up and open my eyes, I thank Jehovah. I truly do thank my creator for, yay, I'm alive, I can see. You know, that's just me. I don't know what you all do, but... I'm getting tired. It must be around 3 o'clock or so. I feel like it's, uh... Well, it was 4.16 when I started. So, I don't... It's so weird that numbers come to me like that. I, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it. I mean, what do you all think? The number 1111... 723, 636, um, 17, 120, 117, I mean, all the 17, 17, 7, 7, 17. I used to play that at Keno, and, you know, I, I, I shouldn't gamble, I know, I shouldn't, but, um, you know, if I do have an extra 50 cents or something, um, I'll play the numbers. You got to play to win, so that's for sure. And you never know if you're going to win. On the days, North Carolina's weird. Like in Florida, I could pick the pick three number for all week. But North Carolina, you got to do it every single day. So I guess on the days I don't get there, you know, my luck, it's true, is that's when I win. Because a couple weeks ago, I had numbers, and I, I was new going to get my numbers. It's at the um gas station I go to. Right down the street. The sickos. Kudos to them girls that work there for putting up with me. <laughs> but I usually see them every day. Try to put a smile on somebody's face. But um, I meet a lot of people throughout my day because I'm a talker. You know, Ken used to say, oh, my God, you will talk to anybody, won't you? And I say, well, why not, you know? You know, when you, when you meet up with somebody or talk with somebody, you never know what's going to come out of that conversation. But to me... It might be an opportunity to, you know, s spread the word of the kingdom. And, um, you know, that's just me, though, you know. But I, I'm not allowed to do that yet because I'm an unbaptized publisher. So I don't actually go door to door yet. I just moved to this town in Shelby. And um, the, the kingdom hall that I go to, my... the. The lady that I studied with, oh my God, Angelicia, I just absolutely love her and her husband. They are from Africa. I'm sorry, they're not from Africa. Oh God, forgive me. Um, they are from Kenya. I I don't know, but um, they are both of them. They've been in the the w witness. Um, Jehovah Witness, they've been studying for years, they've been baptized for years, but they're missionaries, and that's what I'd like to eventually become, as a missionary, you know, and spread the word to places that 
you know, we're able to do so. I personally, I would like to, you know, meet Miss Oprah Winfrey. She's my mentor. And um, come to her school. I'd actually love to go to college at her school. I wish I could win a scholarship to study. Um, just study journalism or something so I can get my degree, you know. I do want to go back to school myself. At one particular time, my daughter Sarah, my daughter Anna, and myself was all in school. <laughs> but um, I ended up, my English class I dropped. So I have to have English 101. And then I, the math. Um, I'm getting past this math. I'm studying right now to um, conquer fractions and decimals. So, my name's Teresa, and this is a note to my daughters. This is an online journal of um, my book I'm promoting. Um, blah, blah, blah. So... In the world we live in today with all the social media, it gives me a platform to use. So right now I'm going through YouTube and I have to have, in order for my videos to go live, I have to have 1,000 subscribers and 1,000 likes and then they'll start doing my videos. So right now I woke up yesterday, I had 10, 20 subscribers, I was happy as a green uh I was happy as a lark, or, you know, I was doing circles, doing the happy dance, because um, I know Jehovah's blessing me because of this. I asked for his guidance, so while I'm spreading his word and doing the works of Jesus, I'm doing it through on a social media platform. And I will ask the elders tomorrow. Um, you know, I don't want to go against anything on the provisions of God. But if I'm spreading God's word, you know, in a good environment, and, you know, then I, I'm praying that will continue to bless me. Um, this has been... One weekend that uh, it's been very special to me. I look forward on the weekends with my sister. Excuse me. But th this particular weekend wasn't about me. It wasn't about her. We ended up um, having some arguments, which we discussed and we said some words again. And I just pray to the Jehovah that whole will open up Maureen's eyes to see that I'm in a, a, an unique individual. I haven't lived with my sister for over 10 years. And I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. You know, we lived together before and once again, I was home all day, but I don't think she worked on either. I'm not sure. But back then, I was on Social Security disability. Um, I was still having Crohn's issues and, oh my gosh, rectal surgeries and you name it. Um, I have an ultimate dream of opening up. Check this out. Opening up an amusement park for handicapped people only. No people that is not handicapped and they can bring their dog. You know, it's a park for them. I, I will design it with every aspect of my life that I go through with Crohn's disease. I will have every public bath, every bathroom at my park for people with Crohn's disease. And people, you know, 
before they can get a ticket to come, they have to, you know, they'll let me know of their handicap and how many people will be with them and what, ex and what extremities can this person do, you know. So it's going to be, in my mind, it's the most beautiful park ever. And, and it's made with love, you know, because I love so much in my heart that, like all my prophets, I want to go to this, you know, for these, you know, individuals that, um, you know, we were born with, with handicaps. You know, I believe, um, I believe that God made man in his mind, the perfect man. And, you know, he thought it was Adam and Eve. And so, when they went to the Garden of Eden, and they ate the forbidden, out from the um, tree of um, knowledge, that they weren't supposed to eat it. The serpent, the snake told him to eat it. He lied to him. So that was like the first lie. It was the devil lying to Adam and Eve. And so the Garden of Eden was no longer the Garden of Eden. We were born under that sin. And look at all the bad stuff that happened. He killed, God killed um, Adam and Eve. You know, they were no longer perfect. So he created Jesus Christ as his savior, as his son. And he died for the ransom. He gave up his entire life so we can have a chance to be saved. You know, it's pretty sad, but you know, that that's our create that's our creator's son, you know. So in the works of Jesus he walked around and spread the good word from his father Jehovah. You know, he I've read the Bible, I don't understand it. There's sections I haven't even read yet, but I'm learning each and every day. You know, knowledge is just incredible that Jehovah's blessed me with this brain of mine. You know, it's very complex, my brain. And I don't know if it's um, what goes on in there. I would love to have my brain examined one time while I'm alive. They used to do it at John Hopkins, but um, <clears throat> I don't know if they do it any longer. Um you know, they have the human guinea pigs over there at the facility. So it's a teaching hospital, and it's one of the best hospitals in the entire world. So, um, you know, John Hopkins Hospital, yep, one of the best hospitals there is. So, uh... I'm going to show favoritism for that one. I just wish they would fix my daughter. She's had so many surgeries. So, so, so many. I tried to send an email to um, Denise, Kenny's sister, because she's an RN there. And, she, you know, she can lead me into the right direction to the gastroenterologist there. Um, my daughter's been a patient at St. Joseph for years. And, um, yeah, for years. I went there one time, and they took really, really good care of me. Back back when I was married to Mike, I, I went there one time, I remember it. And they were doing all these tests for me. They were so good. It was such a good hospital. Mm. So, I got to take this outside, so, um, oh, well, I hope it
it's charged enough, I can't even see. So this is my YouTube channel. I'm going to start trying to um, record on both YouTube and Facebook because I have to use Facebook as the platform to get it to go to YouTube. So it's a lot. It's a learning experience. I have a lot of things going on in my mind and that things that I would like to accomplish this year. And I'm a person that's trying to sm smash them all together and do everything like this, you know. But I have a goal. I said I will write my book this year. You know, this is the year. Teresa, sh like Pop Pop, you say, shitter, get off the damn pot. Well, I'm tired of shitting and, I, you know, I'm getting, I got off the pot. This is it. February 23rd was a like a day of reckoning to me. Um, I will always remember this day. It's a day that my mom passed away 17 years ago. And for many, many, many years, I used to blame myself for it because I was in the hospital going through drug detox only because my mother made me go. She prom... <sighs> I, I was fighting her tooth and nail. I swear I was, I had the mattress pulled off of my baby girl's bed and it laid in the living room for nearly seven days. And all I could do was vomit and throw up and I had heat and chills and I was doubled over in pain. And my mom would try to nurse me, God bless her soul. Every morning she she'd try to get me scrambled eggs and, you know, get me to eat, get me to eat. But when you want something so bad and you taste it, you know, you just want something really bad. Me, I can taste what I want and I need to go for it, you know. So on February the 3rd, I had my colon removed. And I wear an ostomy bag, and I'm an ostomy patient, and I'm a cancer survivor of colon cancer, which I have to check into that on the Dr. Malik's notes because I believe I read it was colon cancer, and I have to make sure before I put that out there. So I'm just saying that, y'all. But either way, you'll learn before I ended up losing my colon in my Crohn's and colitis um, chapters, you'll realize, you'll soon learn that um, it was the last straw for me. I didn't want to do it, but had I done it earlier in my life, my life would have probably been a lot easier. I don't know, but um, I have to ask Dave DeGraw. I was dating him all through my high school years. Um, Dave was my first love, and he, he taught me a lot about love and to love myself and to be a, um, you know, to be a girlfriend. You know, he was my first true everything. And I fell deep and hard in love with that Mr. Dave DeGraw. Um, God, I can't even, how in the heck did we even meet? I don't remember. I'll have to ask him about that. <coughs> I knew we were in high school, but <coughs> I thought that guy was so damn cute. I still think he's cute. But, uh, um, I'm actually, I'm friends with all my hexes. But I, I realized something today, and I got to thinking. You know, every relationship, I've only been in five my entire life. I think, wait a minute, uh, Dave, Mike. Um, James, Dave, Mike, James, and Kenny. Four, I've been with four men in my entire life. I'm actually, I'm very selective. Um, you know, this is my body. I... I say who has can, I say who I can give it to, you know? And for me, 
to to uh, have sexual intercourse with somebody. I'm not one of them girls that just... I don't know how these girls do it, and I'm not one to judge, but I can't... I, I'm very selective of who I give my body to, and I'm just saying that. That's it. But... Every one of my relationships, all four of them I've been in, that I was cheated on. And I, I'm like, is this a pattern? You know? I don't know. I have to figure that out. And, you know, yeah. My husband cheated on me before we got married with Dave, David DeGraw's sister-in-law in my car on lunchtime at the Belmore parking lot. We were only dating then, so what what made me still marry him is God beyond me. You know, did a but I truly loved him, you know, and it was before we got married. We 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 broke up, okay. No, oh, we broke up for a little bit. Me and Mike. Only because, um, at the time I was dating David DeGraw, um, Dave didn't know my dad was child abusing me. He didn't know till recently. He didn't know the childhood that I had because, um, you know, I didn't tell anybody. Well, my friend Ian knew. Ian, Miss Karen, and Mr. George knew. And, um, you know, that's, that's Ia's parents. God bless them. Mr. George is still alive. Um, the loud mouth clubhouse. Oh, we always would go there. Have such great fun. Bull and oyster roast. But, um, my very best friend growing up was, uh, Ia Klassen. And today, this day, even though we don't talk, she knows she's my best friend still in my heart. You know, we did a lot together. We hung out in high school and, um, you know, with her cousin, Carla Freeberger. Um, we all hung out together and it was, you know, it was just me and Ia. She took more business classes and all. She wasn't in um, many of my classes, but she knew the pain I was going through. She knew my family, um, how my dad would go off. And only she knew then. You know, um, and Miss Karen, you know, she would talk to me all the time. Her blessed mother, she would make me feel as one of their own, you know, and that's what I loved about Ia, you know. So, and Ricky, she was Kathy's friend, and um, my dad used to say, Kathleen, don't you dare bring that girl on the boat no more. Because Ricky would come on the boat with us in the weekends when we were um, boating. Because um, my dad, oopsies, yes, we lived on a boat, <laughs> Five Bells 2. Oh, that was her name, Five Bells 2. It was like a houseboat. And there we got, we stayed down the harbor of... <coughs> <coughs> We had the show. Dad always said, I want to stay the night at the harbor and dock. <laughs> <clears throat> so he did. We stayed at the harbor one day, and we were just like little hillbillies hanging around the boat and all. But my dad, my dad was super fun. My dad loved his children with all his heart. He has many of them. Um... He was a truck driver his entire life. So he loved to drive a truck. And one thing I can kick myself in the butt for, my dad had his own rig and he always, um, because, um, and he always said, come on, Therese, let me teach you how to drive it. Let me teach you how to drive it. And I said, no, dad, I'm scared, I'm scared. He's like, come on, it's only 13 gears. So, I was even scared to learn to drive the bus. My dad had a bus one time. Mm. Mm. My name's Teresa Reinhardt, and this is a note to m my daughters. Thank you for watching my videos and supporting me. 
in my dreams. By you watching this video, you are helping me reach my dreams and um, and help, uh, what's the word I want to say? You're helping me reach my dreams, first of all, but believing in me, you know, and sharing my story with somebody that you think that it might put a smile on their face. Uh, if if that's all you can do is say, hey, i seen this Fruit Loop on uh, YouTube. Check out her channel. You know, something. I just need to get my name out there. And if you guys can spread the love of what I'm trying to do, I truly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I truly do. Uh, God knows. God knows what I've gone through and the struggles I've been through to get where I am today. Uh, it's amazing to me when you put God first in your life, when you wake up every day and thank your creator for giving you another day. It's amazing. It's amazing the work of what God can do when he's got his arms wrapped around you. You know, it's just... It's unbelievable. I'm blown away by it. I truly am. Look at my goofy foot. I got Jackson uh, tried to hurt me the other day. So I got it in this compression thing going on. Mm. So, uh, I get off topic a lot, and I got to start writing down and teach myself to stay on topic, because people get lost in my videos, and I don't want you to be lost, so I'm learning. This is how my bird brain thinks, because actually inside my brain is going boop, 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 boop. My brain thinks faster than my lips will flap and talk. And um, so I go from one thing to another, and I'm working on it. You know, I'm truly working on it. I have high blood pressure. It's, I've had high blood pressure um, going on uh, when I found out I was living in Pasadena. Um, and I found out I have real high blood pressure. So right now, I'm taking three blood pressure medicines. I take um, lisinopril, 40 milligrams. I take one of them in the morning. I take ampelotropine in the evening right before bed. It's five milligrams. That keeps me going all night long, I guess. And I take carvitolol, 3.125 milligrams, um, three times a day. So I've been, my daughter's a nurse. She got me a um, blood pressure monitor. So you'll probably see me um, doing my blood pressure, which we're going to do right now. Um, so hang tight. I'm going to have to turn you sideways a minute. Can you see? Out. And I know I drink a lot of coffee, but uh, right now, coffee's my savior. Um, I try to drink water in between. I drink a lot of water, so I think I'm good on the water thing. So let me get set up here. Quitting smoking is one of my goals this year. I was supposed to quit January 1st, February 23rd, January 20th, January 17th. I have my patches. I have my gum. Um, I called 1-800-QUIT-NOW. I'm ready. My date was uh, January 30th, 1st. So I'm a couple days behind, but uh, I hope to quit soon. I just have to wake up and say that's the day, you know. 
Um, okay, here we go. I don't, I gotta get my glasses. And I gotta sit down. Okay, here it goes. Oh, she said put it on my heart. Okay, 138 over 97. That's pretty good for me. My goal is to not be on any medication because I really hate pharmaceutical drugs. Really, really, really do. I had this journal for a long time. And today when I woke up, it was on laying on the floor. So it must have been working last night and it fell out. So I said, today is the day. But I was writing in my journal. I said, uh, as I sit here and reflect on this absolutely beautiful day Jehovah's blessed me with, as I do every year, since my beloved mother had passed into somewhere we all actually don't know where her soul goes. I think a person's soul, when they pass, lives in all of us, lives in every life that she has touched. That's her legacy. But I think every person's soul that's very close to you. Like, I could be, I think of my mother every single day of my life because there is something that I'm doing or reading that reminds me of my mother. It's like signs. It's signs that somebody gives me and I don't know who gives me the signs. And I, true, I believe, I know that through prayer, that we ask God to let us rest in peace. So I know that we're buried in the ground or, you know, when we die, our body is resting in peace till God calls you home to him, his paradise. You know, when I first didn't understand, when I became, was studying to have a witness, it was about death. Where do we go when we die? You know, we're sleeping, we're resting in peace until God calls you to his paradise. You know, I believe in angels. Um, I believe in a power that's higher than myself. So, you know, some people call your God something else. You, you know, that's up to you. This is me, this is my story. My God, his name is Jehovah. Um, I look forward to being a baptized Jehovah Witness. Um, I have a long way to go. Um, in Maryland, I was studying with one of the sisters that partakes in the memorial, and I feel truly blessed by that. So... In, in the religion of Jehovah Witnesses, we don't celebrate birthdays and Christmas and Valentine's Day and Groundhog's Day or whatever have you. You know, we, in, because according to Bible, the only thing that it says to celebrate in the Bible is the memorial. And when you go to the memorial in the, Jehovah Witness religion, you partake in um, taking a sip of wine. And those people that do that know that they are one of the 144,000 
that'll be certain um, people in um, the new system. Um, I've been taught that everything, you will have a second chance if Jehovah, if you die before Armageddon. Um, when when the heavens are filled and the, the well it's not the heavens um of co according to Jehovah witness and in the book of Re 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 revelation god will restore the earth and it'll become paradise and y you know that's where we will have our second chance when he takes you when he takes you from when he takes your spirit and soul from you resting in peace and you start living in paradise with him, he will give you another chance. You know, and I couldn't, I couldn't come to, I couldn't come to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like even the murderers, the people that do horrible crimes to young children and, you know, but yes, they will also be given a second chance. That's how much Jehovah loves you, that he believes in you, you know. So until then, to Armageddon and, you know, nobody knows when that is. I know we're living in the last of the days because according to revolution, we are. And I'll get farther in scripture with that to you. I don't want to bore you to death. But, um, so today marks 17 years of my mom passing. And my mom is buried in gardens of faith. And my mother nor my sister has headstones yet on their grave because I couldn't afford them. But one day, um, you know, one day, I know where they're at. And one day I would like to have a marker for them. But, you know, maybe their bones are there. But their soul and their spirit is no longer there. But some people feel they go to a graveyard and can talk to them and it gives them comfort and peace. It's whatever that you are comfortable with. You know, I I talk to a grave I used to before I study st before I started studying. And I try to go every time to Gardens of Faith when I'm in Maryland because, you know, I have my that's my family burial site. And um, I like to talk to my people and check on them. <laughs> you might want to say that. But, uh, oh, what's that? An ant, an ant there. So I'm going to turn this off for a minute and I'm going to catch up. I'm going to refresh my drink. I'm going to go in, um, put on some music, and I'm going to relax and talk to you on, inside where it's a lot warmer. So... See y'all in a few minutes, okay? I blabbed away for 43 minutes, so. <laughs> uh, it's 4.50. I gotta, I gotta be cleaned up by 6 a.m. So, I hope this video puts a smile on somebody's face. You know, maybe, maybe you, you know, wouldn't know we're interested in anything. But uh, thank you for watching my video and supporting my dreams of Hernania and my amusement park and, and especially to um, to those that are sharing my word for a note to my daughter. I truly, I truly thank you from the bottom of my heart because I never knew this could be like this. And it's it's just a wonderful feeling when you know that God has your hand in something. So God bless you all. Put a smile on somebody's face, and I hope I made your day happy. Or I hope I put a smile on your face.
Okay, see you all soon. Love you. Bye.